often time people come up and say, hey, Bruce, are you really that good? I said, well, if I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm boasting. But if I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> Welcome to the house where God, pop culture, and life collide. How's everyone doing today? Growing up, there were three major influences in my life. God, my mom, and Bruce Lee. Now, by all accounts, Bruce did not believe in the Christian God. Man, or a God of any kind, though he was part Jewish. Bruce was a big believer in self-development, self-reliance, and being the best person he could be. He fought against racism. Chop, chop, you know, with the Iceland and all that. Demanded excellence in the films he was making. Lee will shoot no less than 10 takes to capture one small sequence that will appear on screen for a mere 3.5 seconds. And became a cultural icon. Of course, he was also famous for his physical prowess. Two finger push-ups. The one inch punch. And a sidekick that kicked like a truck. <laughs> that ain't movie magic. With all of these amazing abilities, the most impressive thing, at least to me, was his approach to life. Even though he didn't believe in God, I was amazed to learn that his thinking behind the transformation of martial arts, from Chinese martial arts, to Jeet Kune Do, to No Way As Way, points to God in a very interesting fashion. One of the many spiritual problems that we face during this coronavirus pandemic is the loss of passion of purpose. There aren't even days anymore. It used to be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and now it's just day, day, day. To continue to live meaningful lives in the midst of this crisis, we have to make sure that we aren't just going through the motions. Day? Bruce was not a fan of going through the motions. Kick me. What was that? Bruce tells a student to kick him and warns him not to think about the technique as he's doing it. Whether it's sports, music, martial arts, or whatever, if you are focused on the execution of the technique while you're doing it, you are going to mess up. The goal is to be present in the moment, which means you have to love what you are doing enough that you aren't concerned about whether or not you are doing it right in the moment that you're doing it. We need emotional content we have to pursue the things that we believe in with passion, not for our own glory, but for something greater. It is like a finger pointing away to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus was in the middle of his Sermon on the Mount, and he told everybody there that lights weren't made to be hidden. Lights are there to illuminate and bring attention to that which is important. In the context of Matthew 5, that's God. The light discussed in Matthew 5 is Bruce's finger pointing to the moon. The finger is there to point us in the direction of what we should be giving our attention to, just as we are supposed to do as the light of the world in giving glory to God. If all we do is stare at the finger, drawing attention to ourselves, then we miss out on all that heavenly glory. As the light of the world, everything we do as Christians should be pointing to God's glory. The tricky thing is that there's no formula for doing that. Bruce was also not a fan of formulas. There's no set pattern of movements. No, well, when he does this, then I do this. It's just a total freedom to react to what the other person does. The spontaneity and freedom found in Bruce Lee's interpretation of martial arts is also found in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I might share in its blessings. Paul, the author of Corinthians, 
is talking about his rights as an apostle and how he chooses to use his freedom to talk about the gospel. Paul doesn't make people learn about what's important to him first. Instead, Paul will show an interest genuine in the person he's talking to first, becoming more like them, to establish a foundation for communication so that he will have an opportunity to talk about the gospel. Exactly like missionary work. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Eleanor Roosevelt. If this discussion of how Paul handles missionary work and evangelism freaks you out, just remember that's how all relationships work. The gospel and dating tips? You are getting hooked up today. Paul is preparing himself to talk to anybody, anywhere, anytime. Spiritual kung fu, baby. You'll also notice Paul's use of the word all in becoming all things to all people. All means all. Don't shoot the messenger. Paul uses the same non-formulaic approach to the gospel that eventually defines Bruce's approach to martial arts. Bruce inscribes it perfectly on the back of this medallion uh, where he wrote the words that have become his motto. And it says, using no way as way, having no limitation as limitation. No way as way is a dangerous phrase to throw around. This phrase has been somewhat misinterpreted and people think of using no way as way to mean anything I do is okay. I don't think Bruce really intended it to mean that way. He just meant not to be um, boxed in by a certain way so that you never get into a situation where there's only one response. You adapt to what the situation calls for. In trying to give glory to something greater than ourselves, a key element in Bruce's approach to martial arts and Paul's approach to the gospel is the ability to make adjustments depending on who Bruce is fighting or who Paul is talking to. Paul understands that there is the same danger in interpreting his own words that any behavior becomes acceptable. But Paul elaborates in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. Paul concedes that while he has the freedom to be all things to all people, not everything is a good thing to do. There is discernment that is required. Paul continues in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 to give us a couple of ways to figure out how we can determine if something is a good thing to do. Verse 24, no one should seek their own good, but the good of others. Verse 31, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So if you do good things for other people and you do things for the glory of God, it's probably a good thing to do. And we bring glory to God by doing the things that he asks us to do. Carry each other's burdens, love your neighbor as yourself, do unto others as you would have done unto you, are just a few examples. So now we have a purpose in being a light of the world that we can accomplish by using our freedom for the good of others and for the glory of God. Well, now we just need the right mindset. Empty your mind. Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Bruce's mindset is very philosophical. Being formless, being shapeless, being like water speaks to the spontaneity, freedom, and adaptability he advocates through no way as way. Christians should be like water as well. John chapter 7, verses 38 to 39. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Jesus said that by believing in him, rivers of living water will flow from within us. Living water that is clarified to be the Holy Spirit in verse 39. We are called to be like the living water of the Holy Spirit that allows us to adapt, just like water. You put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Water has the ability to passively adapt to whatever happens to it, like being poured into different containers. Being like living water is more powerful because it allows us to actively adapt to any situation. The living water of the Holy Spirit offers the ultimate adaptability. This is the power of the Holy Spirit that there is no problem, situation, or space in our life that it can't fit into. When we have the power of the Holy Spirit flowing within us, there is no scenario that we cannot adapt to, and there is no person that we cannot talk to. Being a light to the world so that we can glorify God with all that we do by becoming all things to all people can only be done when we choose to cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit so that rivers of living water will flow from within us. Be like water. Be like Jesus. 
be adaptable. Peace. Be water, my friend.